Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what makes gauge blocks stick together. I have here two pieces of stainless steel. Now these are not attracted to each other in any way, but the sides of these stainless steel are extremely smooth. Now they're so smooth that something amazing happens when I touch the two edges together. It makes the two blocks stick together. And these are actually pretty well stuck together. You can see I can pull on them and they barely come apart. Even if I do it only halfway on there, it still sticks. This phenomenon of two smooth pieces of metal sticking together is called ringing. And today we're going to be trying to figure out why it happens. These two pieces of metal are actually called gauge blocks. And gauge blocks are the way that we standardize length in the industry. Because gauge blocks can ring together like this, you can actually combine them to get any length that you need. For example, if I needed exactly two inches, I can just ring these together. And you can know that as long as they ring together, then that surface is a good surface to use and you don't have to add any additional length by combining them together. So there's no correction factor that you need to do with them. You can see this picture here of 36 Johansson gauge blocks rung together. So everything that I read about gauge blocks always mentions that it's a mystery in how they stick together and that we don't really know why they stick together. But there are three main mechanisms that could play into the role of why gauge blocks stick together like this. The first mechanism is air pressure. Whenever you squeeze out the air from in between two objects, that actually creates a little bit of a vacuum in there. And so the air pressure from around those two objects keeps them together. This is kind of the same reason why when you have paper stacked up together like this, and you pick up just the top piece, you can pick up the whole stack. That's because there's low pressure in between those papers and there's high pressure from the atmosphere around it and so it compresses them together and keeps them stuck together. The next mechanism that they could stick together is through surface tension. Because these gauge blocks always have a protective oil on them, some people say that that oil actually has a surface tension to it so that helps stick them together. You can see obviously these two wires don't stick together, but if I coat them in oil, then they stick. And the third mechanism is through actual electrical bonding. So those two pieces of metal can actually come close enough together and they're so smooth that the electron orbitals can actually get close enough that they interact with each other and they can start being attracted to the atoms in the opposite piece of metal. And so they actually become slightly bonded together. So let's see if we can do a few experiments to try to figure out more why these gauge blocks stick together. First, let's test the air pressure theory. So let's put them under a vacuum and see if we can actually get them to ring together while they're under vacuum vacuum, so air pressure can't play a role in it. Okay, we're at a full vacuum in here now. Let's move the gauge block down. Sit there for a bit. So in this first experiment, the gauge blocks have a little bit of oil in them, but we're going to have no air pressure around them. And we'll see if we can ring them together while they're in the vacuum. It's lifting it. Look at that. They rung together in a vacuum. So it's definitely not air pressure that's ringing these together. Although not as strong. Now we're gonna remove the oil from the gauge block so it's a completely smooth, clean surface with no oil on them. And let's see if they can stay rung in the vacuum chamber. So once I've cleaned the surface and removed the oil, I can already tell it's a lot harder to ring them together. You can still do it, but it's really hard. So they're still rung together in there with no oil under a full vacuum. Oh, came off. So they're still able to stay rung in the vacuum chamber, even with no oil on them. So that right there tells me that air pressure in and of itself is not the mechanism in which they stay stuck together. Now let's do that same test with oil. Okay, now let's see how they swing.
So no matter how hard I'm banging it against the side, it doesn't fall off. So the oil definitely helps in the vacuum. It's stuck. There we go. So there was definitely a difference in how hard I had to knock it to get it off when there was oil versus when there was not oil. So based on these experiments, what is it that's actually holding the gauge blocks together? Well, it's actually all three of the mechanisms. Because as soon as you put the gauge blocks together, you have actually excluded air from inside of it. So there is a vacuum inside there compared to the outside air. But the thing is, is if it's dry in between there, then it can't hold the vacuum very well. It needs a little bit of oil to fill in any of the gaps so the air can't get inside there and break the vacuum. But you can see that that's not completely necessary for them to ring together because I completely removed the air from around it and it was still able to hold itself together. So that means even if there's no air in the room, these can still hold themselves together. But the thing is, they just can't do it as well because once you remove the air from the room, it has to rely completely on the surface tension of the oil inside of there. In fact, we know that this oil plays a major role in keeping these stuck together because they actually account for the oil when they're making the gauge blocks. They actually make each gauge block around 25 nanometers shorter than they need to be in order to account for what they call a ring film, which is that tiny little film of oil in between the two gauge blocks when they stick together. And then finally, once you've removed all of the oil and the air from around it and they still stick together, then that's the third mechanism we're talking about. The atoms that are in both sides of the steel come close enough together that they're actually attracted to each other, just as though they're attracted to the same atoms in that same piece of steel. And in my opinion, that's the weakest of them. It has a very small role to play in it because the attractive force isn't very strong between them. So in the end, we do know how gauge blocks stick together. It's three mechanisms all working together. All of them added together make it the strongest possible. And when you take one of those components away, it weakens it a little bit. So when someone asks whether it's the air pressure, the surface tension, or the atomic forces keeping gauge blocks together, you can just answer yes. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is a second channel I have where I do experiments similar to this channel, but in a much shorter time, I make the videos less than a minute long. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.